Where's the beef? A new study on meat is creating controversy because it challenges assumptions about whether meat is unhealthy. This is America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. Everyone knows that meat is bad for you. For a long time, we've been told that meat, especially red meat and processed meat, can raise your risk of getting cancer and heart disease and diabetes and of an early death. And most important, eating meat makes you a bad person who's destroying the planet. But hey, at least you're going to die early. According to one of the directors of the World Cancer Research Fund, the message people need to hear is that we should be eating no more than three portions of red meat a week and avoiding processed meat altogether. Limiting your intake of red meat is also the advice of the American Cancer Society and the American Heart Association. These studies have informed government dietary recommendations around the world. There's even been an effort to get processed and red meat out of school cafeterias globally, from New York to Helsinki. Which makes it a little surprising that at the beginning of October, this study by an international team of researchers concluded that actually, the link between red meat and cancer, heart disease, and death is actually not well supported by research. Here's one of the co-heads of the study. Based on the research, we cannot say with any certainty that eating red or processed meat causes cancer, diabetes, or heart disease. Now, if that's a shocker, wait till you hear their recommendations. For the majority of people, but not everyone, continuing their red and processed meat consumption is the right approach. Uh, what? That's the exact opposite of what we've been told to do. Obviously, this latest study is causing controversy. Critics are saying the study has problems. A Harvard professor of epidemiology and nutrition who advocates a vegan diet pointed out many of the participants of the study were young and unlikely to succumb to illness in the short time period involved in the trials. Others have accused the group of researchers as being biased. The researchers have a partnership with a branch of Texas A&M University. That branch receives some funding from the beef industry. Nevertheless, most scientists are saying their methodology was thorough. They picked through data from 54,000 people who had taken part in various randomized trials. They were looking for a connection between eating meat and health outcomes. We did not find a statistically significant or an important association in the risk of heart disease, cancer, or diabetes for those that consumed less red and processed meat. Further, amongst cohort studies uh, following millions of participants, um, we did find a small uh, reduction in risk amongst those who consumed three fewer servings of red or processed meat per week. However, um, the certainty of evidence was low to very low. For vegetarians and those who don't eat a lot of meat, they often cite health concerns for these choices. However, the benefits of abstaining from meat are uncertain, and if they do exist, they're very small. Now to be clear, this new study is not saying meat is good for you. So put down the triple bacon cheeseburger. I said put it down, Steve. Anyway, the study is saying that the data on whether meat is good or bad for you doesn't support a conclusion either way. So we shouldn't tell people to eat more or less meat because there isn't enough evidence. This study is what's called a systematic review. They didn't do their own trials or experiments. These studies are a type of research where people comb through all of the publications on a single topic and bring them together to form the most robust perspective on a subject. Kind of like when you read all 61 Amazon reviews to bring together the most robust perspective on which pillowcase to buy. Basically, these researchers looked at the same data that for years has been the basis of various arguments about how meat is bad for our health. But instead of looking at a single study, they looked at 61 of them. They also reevaluated whether the reported results were actually supported by the data. And after putting all those studies together, they came to a completely different conclusion. In other words, the evidence didn't change, the interpretation did. What this boils down to is the fundamental difficulties of studying nutrition and health. To quote one epidemiologist, Nutrition science is fiendishly complicated, and we'll probably never know definitively whether red meat is good or bad for your health. Quote me. I will, thank you. 
Why is this the case? The highest standard for medical and health science is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study, the kind used in drug trials. I won't get into all the details of that, but the main point is they can determine cause and effect. This drug causes this effect. But you can't have that for a nutrition study looking at what effect a meat diet has, because that would involve randomizing, then feeding meat or no meat to thousands of people for decades, which is A, unethical, and B, impractical in the extreme. So nutritionists have to rely on observational studies, not double-blind placebo-controlled studies. But observational studies can't prove cause and effect. They can only show correlation. And correlation is not causation. For example, and this is real, there's a 99% correlation between U.S. per capita consumption of margarine and the divorce rate in Maine. But more Americans eating margarine does not actually cause people in Maine to get a divorce. Probably. Unless Fabio is involved, and then all bets are off. I... I can't believe... I can't believe it's not butter. The point is, these observational studies also can't say for sure that eating meat causes certain health problems, even if it's correlated to them. Here's how an observational study for meat would work. You take a large group of people over a long period of time, ask them what they eat, and study the outcomes. And there may be a correlation between eating meat and these health problems we're talking about. But the problem is, we have no clue what else might be going on. Did the people who eat meat in these studies also smoke and drink? Was that hamburger patty served with a side of fries and a Coke? Did they not exercise? Did they meet Fabio, then eat a bunch of margarine and drive to Maine to get a divorce? There are lots of factors that can affect health, and these studies can't account for all of them. And beyond that, having people accurately report how much meat they consume is also really problematic. Can you name every meal you had in the past month? Can you even remember what you had for lunch yesterday? And do you have any idea what's actually in the McRib? And do you really care? Yes, I will eat a yoga mat if you smother it in McRib sauce. And yes, I know the McRib isn't made out of yoga mats. I'm saying I would still eat a yoga mat. Anyway, to find out how many McRibs people ate, scientists attempt to get answers through food diaries, recall surveys, and the Food Frequency Questionnaire, or FFQ. Some of the questions are pretty straightforward. How many cups of coffee do you have a day? Others are some real thinkers. How many cups of ribs have you consumed in the past three months? Yes, because cups are the way normal people talk about how many ribs they've eaten. So asking people what they ate can result in not very good data. And let's not forget the problem of correlation versus causation. To illustrate how problematic that FFQ is, the website 538 had their readers take an FFQ. Their shocking new study, based on 54 results, found that eating raw tomatoes is linked to Judaism. Eating egg rolls is linked to dog ownership, and eating steak with the fat trimmed is linked to a lack of belief in a god. Because anyone that cuts the fat off their steak is clearly a godless psychopath. That's my own interpretation of the data. Anyway, observational studies can be misleading. Here's another, which is misleading for a different reason. The International Agency for Research on Cancer produced a study that says eating 50 grams of processed meat every day increased the risk of colon cancer by 18%. That sounds scary. Like if I eat 50 grams of pepperoni a day, I have an 18% higher chance of getting colon cancer. But that's not what it means. See, the lifetime risk of someone developing colon cancer is about 5%. This observational study found that among people who eat 50 grams of processed meat each day, the prevalence of colon cancer was just under 6%. 6 is roughly 18% more than 5, hence the 18%. Okay, so that sounds more like if you have 100 people who all stop eating their 50 grams of processed meat each day, then one of them who was going to get colon cancer won't get colon cancer even though five of them still will. But that's weird, right? It would mean stopping eating processed meat has a life-changing impact for that one person and no impact for the other 99 people. So if I ended my morning routine of pepperoni for breakfast, 
there's a 99% chance it still wouldn't make any difference in terms of my getting colon cancer. That's not actually helpful when it comes to my own nutritional intake. It says absolutely nothing about what changing my diet would do to me as an individual. Now granted, you might find it useful if you're an administrator evaluating whether to include processed meat in a million school lunches. But you still shouldn't trust it completely, because remember, that study only shows correlation, not causation. And even if it did show causation, which it doesn't, the data itself might be suspect. Because as I mentioned, nutritional survey data is often collected in sloppy ways where the margin of error in data collection is so big that it leads to misleading results like the people who eat egg rolls tend to have dogs. And this is where the debate about the latest meat study comes in. The authors felt that after examining several dozen studies, the quality of evidence implicating red and processed meat in adverse health outcomes remains unclear. In other words, they're not saying red meat and processed meat are healthy, they're saying that even after tons of studies, you really can't be sure. And you'd think we could just leave it at that, right? Wrong. Many of the scientists, doctors, and experts who have spent years demonizing meat and advocating a plant-based diet are trying to kill the new study like it was a 400-pound wild Kentucky hog. A group of doctors from Harvard, Stanford, and elsewhere want it retracted on grounds of public health. And they've put together a statement saying that changing up guidelines on meat as a result of the review would be irresponsible. Dr. David Jenkins, a longtime advocate of veganism, said the evidence against us giving up meat may be weak, but it's there. And the evidence for us eating more meat is not there. All I'm saying is, if someone says there's a weak chance that if you walk across the street, you'll get shot, I would rather stay on the opposite side of the street. Which is why I always advocate for just staying inside your home, cowering in fear. But even if you're not as susceptible to fear-mongering as I am, don't relax yet. The new study itself is dangerous. Scientists at Harvard are warning that its conclusions harm the credibility of nutrition science and erode public trust in scientific research. That's right. A new study that points out how previous studies are unreliable could cause people to lose trust in the people who misinformed us for years. So we should suppress the new study and get back to listening to those other people. One of the doctors involved in the new study calls the blowback hysterical and says more discourse is needed. And that's important because these studies are what governments use to create nutritional guidelines. Let me give you a historical example. Cholesterol. You've probably heard it's bad for you. We have Ansel Keys to thank for that. In 1955, he published the Seven Countries Study. He looked at seven countries and concluded that saturated fat and cholesterol from animal products lead to heart disease. Now, there's a lot of controversy these days about that study, but in 1977, the U.S. government issued its first set of dietary guidelines based partly on that data. And since then, beef consumption per capita in the U.S. is down. And the U.S. has largely been transitioning to a more plant-based diet. Grain, fat, and oil consumption is way up. And as Keyes would recommend, it's mostly vegetable oil. Since then, heart disease has gone down slightly. Great! Good job, American government! We ate less saturated fat and cholesterol, and now we're healthier. Except in that same period of time, there's been an obesity epidemic. It's weird to say, oh, heart health is better now. There's just way more obese people. But we're back to the whole problem of correlation versus causation. In 2015, the USDA issued new guidelines that decided not to recommend people limit their cholesterol because available evidence shows no appreciable relationship between consumption of dietary cholesterol and serum cholesterol. Cholesterol is not a nutrient of concern for overconsumption. Was misguided nutritional advice the cause of the obesity epidemic? Or was it nacho cheese flavored bugles? The takeaway is, nutritional studies are complicated and sometimes unreliable. And then their findings get simplified in ways that can be not correct. So we probably shouldn't completely change our lifestyle just because of stupid headlines like meat is killing us according to science. So what do you think about the new meat study? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported in part by viewers like you. Help us keep uncovering America by contributing to us through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.